everybody else said uh, monoism in different ways hmm. in any uh, philosophy in the world talks about monoism hmm. in different ways but the person who talked about absolute dualism uh, is uh, shrimad vacharya in my sense very considered opinion hmm. he is the, really the jagat guru vacharya is the incarnation of lord vayu hi welcome to kc talks the previous podcast with mr sundar ji very beautifully explained childhood and his all spiritual quest and his practical application of what he has learned through mahabharata that worked in his adolescence in his job and everywhere i'm highly impressed with a, with a particular word that he said that like how we give vaccinations to the kids to protect them from any diseases that they get in their life all the children should get spiritual vaccination from their parents i'm highly impressed about his childhood and i'm more inquisitive uh, I'm, i'm more glad that i would go into understanding madhvacharya from him hare shrinivasa hare shrinivasa acharya pavano smakam acharyani cha bharati devo narayana shishah devi mangala devata what does it mean so it is uh, acharya pavano smakam this is a shloka written by hmm. ivadaraja tirthru who is hmm. one of the uh, persons who comes in the lineage uh, he says uh, acharya pavano smakam hmm. uh, he says with a lot of pride hmm. he says acharya my acharya hmm. or my guru is pavano smakam hmm. pavana that means uh, lord vayu okay that is whose incarnation whose incarnate as madhvacharya hmm. acharya nicha bharati hmm. so bharati is the Uh, wife or the niyata patni of vayu devaru hmm. and uh, acharya pavano smaka macharyani cha bharati devo narayana shisha hmm. my god is narayana shisha hmm. devi mangala devata De- my devi is uh, the goddess is uh, goddess lakshmi hmm. so uh, you'll, you will you the the sequence is interesting hmm. he talks about uh, the, the teacher hmm. and his wife hmm. um and then he says it is my god mm. so reaching god which mm. is lakshmi and uh, goddess lakshmi and lord narayana mm. is through the guru okay yes. wonderful so you chanted this when you started this initial talk yes glad so it's a it's a prati it's a it's a it's a pratha to start like that when you whenever you speak it is i try to do it i think it uh, i like the way you are setting uh, when you are leaving to a destination Hmm. you set uh, you put the destination in your gps hmm. so for me this is a spiritual gps wonderful you have a very modern way of conveying things <laughs> good so uh, madhvacharya is a very less spoken personality in the indian philosophical paradigm at least unfortunate is that that not a lot of people know about madhvacharya and i doubt north indians even know him because we hear much about shankara and uh, to some extent because of so many temples across north south east west on ramanuja so oh, madhvacharya is a name that i was introduced to when i was uh, a 22 23 years old kid somebody who came from udupi uh, he told me who madhvacharya was so this entire idea of of understanding of madhvacharya we want to systematically first understand who is he as a person right and uh, chronological order of uh, where is he from you know so on and so forth okay. so first thing is who is madhvacharya so whatever you said krishna is true uh, mm. he is uh, lesser known than the, than the others mm. but there is uh, uh, his impact mm. uh, very surprisingly is much much more than what we realize okay if you look at the whole country mm. all the way from uh, Srinagar, Jammu Kashmir, all the way up to Kanyakumari. Hmm. Uh, whatever he propagated as the Bhakti Pantha hmm. uh, is something that you can see manifest very hmm. clearly. If you go by the chronological order hmm. of uh, the various Bhakti movements which came, hmm. it could be uh, the people who were Kashmiri Pandits in the north hmm. and there were, they have their own Bhakti Pantha. Hmm. And Rajasthan, which is uh, uh, Mirabai, Hmm. uh and so i'm coming uh, i'm talking about the directional and geographical way not hmm. the chronological way hmm. uh in terms of their you know their times hmm. then you have uh, tulasi das hmm. um in um in what we 
called Uttar Pradesh now. And then we have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the west, mm. in the east of the country. Mm. And uh, Puri Jagannath and the impact yes, on, yes. from there. And then you have uh, St. Tukaram and the Sant mm. uh, you know, community which is there in Maharashtra. Mm. Uh, also coming up with their own understanding of Bhakti. Mm. And Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh uh, because of Madhvacharya's uh you know uh, the various muts which were founded there mm. how they have propagated and of course the haridasa sahitya mm. which is the uh, it is a representation of the philosophy uh, in the kannada form mm. it's not a translation it's a representation mm. and uh, you go down south mm. all the way up to kanyakumari uh, which is uh, uh, a, pl- a place for goddess lakshmi who has incarnated as uh, kanyakumari and the importance of ganga right mm. if you see is been uh, because it is uh, it is the the water which flows out of lord vishnu's feet yes so uh, it, that is why it is called the greatest uh, river yes right so everything if you see how that bhakti pantha has manifested mm. uh, it is much more than uh, what we think about the impact of madhvacharya okay. so the attribution you are right has not happened to madhvacharya mm. uh, enough i would say but um, if you the, the whole bhakti cult in the country came because of him superb so he is the first acharya who has told bhakti is the only way to salvation is it yes so bhakti so there were a lot of people who talked about the concept of bhakti mm. but he gave it in a in a very clear message mm. and uh, when we talk more about his philosophy we will we will delve into this topic okay but in 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 concise form mm. if you say if you uh, ask Uh, there are three different vedantic schools hmm. uh one school will s- has said uh, soham hmm. that means i am god hmm. so and ham aham hmm. are same somebody said i am samoham hmm. that means i am not equal but i am equivalent hmm. the other one the third one which he propagated was dasoham hmm. so the concept of bhakti hmm. in if i were to ask you Hmm. right in which one will it be most manifested dasoham uh, dasoham yeah. because if other places if i am going to become god hmm. there is not much you know uh, i don't have to do so much of bhakti it's not needed why would i want to do it hmm. because i am i am actually him according to that yeah samoham i'll get there <laughs> you know hmm. i'm getting there hmm. but dasoham is something which clearly puts that kind of absolute uh, hmm. you know gap in and distance and separation degrees of se- separation between god and us is not one or two or three or four mm. but it's infinite so, so that is the uh, that is the bhakti cult mm. so if you want to know uh, you know who propagated bhakti amongst the three most effectively you, mm. you can just use these three words and you will get the answer and that's also a reason why so many dasas are there in this uh, sampradaya yes yes wow. everybody calls themselves a haridasa i mean haridasa we call them as people who are uh, grihasthas mm. or people who have a household who sort of just to sort of separate them but haridasas if you see people who have written the devarnamas in kannada mm. it starts all the way from uh, shri narahari tirtha okay. who is the uh, inka who is the uh, second disciple of shri madhvacharya okay. and very surprisingly he comes from orissa so mm. he has written the first kannada devarnama Oh uh, it is there and he was a king and uh, very illustrious uh, king of Orissa he ruled mm. it for 12 very long years then mm. he uh, you know he found a successor to continue mm. and uh, so he came so if you come back to this topic uh, yes it is something that he is not very well known mm. but once you start to unravel his contribution mm. uh, he is in my sense in my in my very considered opinion Hmm. he is the really the jagat guru because so, everybody else said uh, monoism hmm. in different ways hmm. in any any uh, philosophy in the world talks about monoism hmm. in different ways hmm. but the person who talked about absolute dualism hmm. uh, is uh, shrimad vacharya and looks very practical also from a bhakti standpoint yes because why would you want to pray to somebody who who is not really that great <laughs> Super. So it is not that you know God is uh, that's what Madhvacharya says. Mm. He is not a you know slightly better version of us. Mm. In fact, he says he specifically brings it up, mm. saying that the respect that you have for God mm. is not 
something that you have uh, for Raja, for example. We respect Raja also, mm. and we respect him a lot because mm. he is several degrees above us, mm. the king, the ruler, or your parents or your guru. They they all are great, no doubt. But you have to you I mean, the way he describes them, the uh, they describes God is Harireva Paro. Mm. He is different. He is he is totally different from anything else that you know. Hmm. So if you are wondering why am I not able to make out God etc. It's because you have never seen something like that. Yes. yes. Right. So Hari Reva Paro Hari Reva Guru ho. Hmm. He's a guru beyond imagination. Hmm. Hari Reva Jagat hmm. Pitru Matra Gati. A person can be a father or a person can be a mother to some children, but not to the Jagat. Hmm. जगत पितृ मात्र गति जगत ओल ब्रह्मांड ओल यूनिवर्स फॉर दैट लॉर्ड विष्णु इज द फादर एंड ही इज द मदर बोथ सो सो दैट इज दैट इज द दैट्स अ होल मैसेज दैट ही हैज गिवन वंडरफुल वेरी वेरी इंप्रेसिव सो नाउ लेट अस गेट इनटू हु इज मध्वाचार्य राइट सो you know when we want to understand shri madhvacharya hmm. uh, we we have uh, we are very fortunate to have a very seminal text hmm. called shri sumadva vijaya which is okay. a biography hmm. written by uh, the son of one of his disciples hmm. uh, they were not contemporaries uh, throughout their lives hmm. but they have spent some time together hmm. and uh, shri narayana panditacharya who is the author of this Sumadh Vijaya hmm. actually uh, talked to a lot of people hmm. uh, who were with Madhvacharya at different stages of his life, and then he has chronicled this. Hmm. So it's a very very accurate description of uh, Shri Madhvacharya. So Madhvacharya is the incarnation of Lord Vayu. Okay. Right. So to understand Vayu etc., we'll have to go a little into the 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 hierarchy of gods. Okay. So uh, the supreme god. is hmm. lord narayana hmm. or whom we call as vishnu and several other names hmm. uh, the second to that in the hierarchy is goddess mahalakshmi hmm. the third position is of chaturmukha brahma hmm. the four headed brahma hmm. uh, we specifically say chaturmukha brahma because not to be consumed with para brahma who is narayana himself okay uh, in the same kaksha or in the same category you have lord vayu hmm. right so he is in the same category as lord brahma hmm. uh, kinchit adikya we say lord brahma is slightly senior to him hmm. but they are in the same cadre as we, as we hmm. normally say it in uh, our uh, corporate and uh, government hmm. parlance hmm. um and after that is uh, saraswati and bharati hmm. who are the wives of uh, lord brahma and uh, goddess uh, god uh, she lord vayu hmm. respectively hmm. right so that is the hierarchy so mm. the lord vayu occupies an extremely senior position in the hierarchy of gods mm. he is called the jeevottama mm. jeeva meaning soul uttama means the, uh, the supreme or superior mm. most superior jeeva soul mm. is uh, chaturmukha brahma and vayu mm. so he is the incarnation of shri madhvacharya is the incarnation of shri vayu okay Uh, so now no, let us go step by step no this, the real story starts here yes. so vayu is one level below brahma is the vayu is same vayu as we think of pancha vayus ah uh, right so uh, i'm glad you asked that question hmm. uh, it is called nasika vayu the hmm. the the air the physical air hmm. is not this uh, lord vayu Okay. It is only one of his several manifestations. Okay. So, like that, mm. there is there is there is Lord Vayu, mm. who occupies the uh, he is in the same sect or class as uh, Chaturmukha Brahma. Okay, but uh, Prana Vayu is not uh, is not the Vayu that you are talking about. Yes, it is the Prana Vayu. The, so, no. Nasika Vayu is just the physical air. Physical air. So, is not the punch elements of air water uh, fire ether no. space not the not the panchabhuta vayu no he is the prana vayu prana vayu okay so that is why when when somebody uh, is alive hmm. we see we call him prani hmm. that means there is prana inside him yeah 
now nasika vayu is something that you breathe in and air hmm. out hmm. so if tho- those two are different hmm. because uh, if somebody let us say unfortunately somebody dies hmm. the prana has gone out of his body yeah so you can't get a cycle pump and just pump the air hmm. and he won't become alive yes because if this prana and that uh, vayu were the same hmm. the two vayus were the same hmm. and any nobody would have died probably everybody hmm. would have gone and you know come back to life okay so prana is something which is the uh, which is what we call as life life and that is the manifestation of lord vayu lord vayu so can i translate in english as uh, life air yeah loosely so yes because prana is not just uh, a life it is also the manifestation of gnana hmm. and uh, ananda and several other hmm. uh, qualities that comes to a person because of uh, lord uh, lord vayu okay so uh, uh, prana is nothing but that f- force hmm. which is there in our body which hmm. which keeps us alive and keeps us going hmm. every single moment of our life okay so that is why we as i said so there is prana Mm. and that prana mm. is lord vayu that mm. prana also has a prana okay. which is pranasya prana is lord narayana so oh. the person who gives the energy to lord vayu to perform mm. uh, the uh, the the whole task of uh, sustaining somebody mm. is uh, is uh, up to uh, lord narayana superb so uh, when you say vayu uh, is jivottama what do you mean by that so uh, if you look at the hierarchy of gods like hmm. the way our scriptures dis- uh, discuss it hmm. as i said you know we have seen the different ca- categories um from lord uh, chaturmukha brahma downwards hmm. they are all called jivas okay so what happens with these gods hmm. is that they have they uh, they rise there is the hierarchy hmm. and with more sadhana and the more devotion towards god the more they learn about god hmm. um, they keep moving up in the categories they hmm. they get promoted to the next category when they are eligible for it that's how they move hmm. so this when we say brahma brahma is a padavi hmm. it's a post hmm. that individual who is coming to that post keeps changing okay so like some next the person who will become chaturmukha brahma is lord vayu okay he will become brahma Hmm. and Bra- that brahma will go into salvation okay so and uh, after uh, uh, brahma as i said uh, vayudev you will have uh, uh, saraswati and bharati okay. they will move to the next category so hmm. this is how it it sort of moves in the hierarchy okay now when we say b- somebody is jivottama what hmm. happens is so what happens to goddess lakshmi then that's will be the next question we will get she is nitya mm. her position never goes away mm. she is akshara purusha that mm. means she will never change mm. so there is nothing like somebody will else will come and take her position and she will go somewhere else no my question is not about lakshmi yes my question is about the brahma why mm. is he not jivottama and why is vayu the jivottama because anyhow you told same. from brahma onwards yes. it is all pose yes lakshmi is beyond uh, cosmic manifestation so we understand she is right. eternal yes so here when we say vayu uh you know jivottama uh, why not why brahma not jivottama no brahma brahma is also jivottama so they, as i said they are in the same category okay so brahma and vayu are jivottama are jivottama yes. so because i when I, when i went to udupi uh, this time i heard people uh, you know chanting or uh, shouting during the um, ratha hari sarvottama vayu jivottama yes so as an outsider we don't know what vayu are they referring to yes so you clearly told that vayu is at the same level of brahma and he becomes next brahma correct so that Brahm, that vayu is our prana vayu correct so he is inside us yes he is so inside every it, jiva yes so it is uh, you know one of the other stotras or another text which helps us understand uh, shri madhvacharya is uh, called hari vayu stuti it's a shloka which is recited very often hmm. in vaishnava homes and temples every day hmm. so it it says swamin sarvantaratman hmm. that means that manifestation of that vayu hmm. or prana is happens in every jiva hmm. every soul hmm. be it an insect be it a virus hmm. be it uh, be it a germ it could be anything hmm. 
all the way up to uh, uh, the most elevated human beings and devatas mm. um, lord vayu is the one who gives them the energy mm. to live and sustain and to be able to learn and uh, you know uh, progress in their mm. uh, in in their lives so okay. he is there everywhere he okay. is uh, he is so present because everywhere. he is the force that is driving every jeeva is that a reason why he is called jeevottama no it is because he is the, the su- more supreme most Hmm. in in amongst all the jivas hmm. so the hierarchy of jivas hmm. right is completely based on hari bhakti okay the people who have the highest hari bhakti hmm. will be will get a high, highest rating oh. in terms of that so when so what happens when you are on a spiritual path hmm. is that you learn more about god hmm. and then because you love you learn more about him the more uh, you know flabbergasted you are Mm. every single minute mm. uh, about his greatness mm. so your love towards him keeps on going mm. higher and higher so as that happens that spiritual elevation starts happening mm. so when that that you you reach a stage mm. when everything around you just focuses on god mm. everything else becomes um, you know everything else becomes less important and you start to focus on on god mm. and nothing else matters so to get that level of understanding and to get that level of focus and concentration you have to it has to manifest in that form of bhakti mm. so you are uh, like the way you would say that um, the more knowledgeable you are you know the higher you will glow in in a in a school or in a college yeah it is the same uh, hierarchy which which so can i here. say can i say that uh, brahma and uh, vayu are the top most devotees of the lord yes after god is lakshmi oh yes. okay makes a lot of sense so that particular vayu is jeevottama yes and he is incarnation of no he has incarnated as madhvacharya correct so okay. lord vayu mm. is uh, is the chief operating officer mm. for uh, our ceo of the universe who is lord narayana okay so whatever is uh, to be manifested as mm. actions mm. yeah he will carry it out okay uh, lord vayu will carry it out mm. so lord vayu took three incarnations okay one is as hanuman okay to serve lord rama yes and uh, the second one as bhima okay or bhima sena mm. to serve lord krishna okay and he was born as uh, madhvacharya mm. to serve lord vedavyasa super so these three forms of god and there are three corresponding Uh, forms of uh, uh, you know lord vayu also okay and so uh, throughout sumadh vijaya mm. of course with the great effort of sri narayana pandita acharya the author mm. uh, you will see the connections mm. and the commonalities that um, uh, hanuman mm. bhima and madhvacharya have mm. in their uh, modus operandi okay you know their methodology is identical mm. uh, and their uh, love and uh, their devotion towards god mm. is uh i know it's not correct grammar hmm. but it's absolutely absolute okay it's unabridged okay if you see whole of ramayana hmm. there is never a, everybody at some point in time hmm. goes against the will of lord rama mm-hmm. and uh, the person who always brings people on track hmm. uh, is uh, is hanuman, hanuman. Uh, whether it it could be a vali or it could be sugriva it could be lakshmana hmm. uh, or it could be bharata it could be anybody of course not to mention uh, ravana and uh, kumbhakarna and vibhishana and everything hmm. so we'll, we'll talk about it maybe in more detail in another no, but it is very interesting that lord vayu has incarnated as hanuman then he in, in the treta then he has incarnated as bhimasena in the dwapara and in the kali yuga he is incarnated as మధ్వాచార్య మధ్వాచార్య వెరీ నైస్ సో దట్స్ ద శ్లోక దట్ యు నో ఐ హ్ సీన్ అ చార్ట్ వేర్ మధ్వాచార్య సిటింగ్ అండ్ దెన్ భీమసేన విత విత గద అండ్ దెన్ హనుమాన్ సో ఇట్ ఇస్ రిటర్న్ ఆన్ దాట్ ప్రథమో హనుమన్ నామ ద్వితీయో భీమ ఏవ పూర్ణ ప్రజ్ఞస్తృతీయో భగవత్ కార్య సాధక దట్ ఈస్ ద చీఫ్ ఆపరేటింగ్ ఆఫీసర్ ఐ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ భగవత్ కార్య సాధక ఈస్ ద వన్ హూ ఎగ్జిక్యూట్స్ సూపర్ so i just asked you a question about who is madhvacharya then you you had to go to an extent of explaining the universal order yes and then so he is hanuman he is bhima 
and he has come as an acharya to give the knowledge yes so as a layman then i see that you know a person who has hanuman is a very marvic character is a very you know no words to explain um so if he has come as an acharya to teach us something in the kali yuga then definitely this philosophy should have something very unique oh yes it is hmm. uh, hanumanta the name itself the definition itself is like that hmm. it says ye ye gunanam jagata prasiddha hmm. yam teshu teshu smani darshayanti hmm. sakshan mahabhagavata prabham hmm. prabarham hmm. shrimantameham hanumantam ahu okay. it says ye ye gunanam all hmm. the greatest qualities you can think of hmm. they all have manifested as in hmm. hanuman hmm. hanu itself means that okay uh, it's a gunaman hmm. so gunaman when you just use it in in that sense it is absolute gunaman Hmm. and uh, it is very well it is evident to anybody who has even a cursory understanding of ramayana hmm. about how knowledgeable hanuman hmm. was hmm. Uh, you would have seen the famous uh, the cartoon uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know series on hanuman hmm. and uh, when the japanese director who did that hmm. was asked why hanuman hmm. he exactly gave this answer that this man can't get anything wrong <laughs> so okay. he he is so impressed by his knowledge hmm. and his uh, presence of mind and wisdom hmm. so he is hanuman and hmm. then you have bhima sena hmm. who again if you go into mahabharata hmm. the only two people who do not question krishna at any point in time hmm. and have that absolute devotion hmm. are uh, you know uh, bhima hmm. and uh, draupadi hmm. these two people never go against the will of krishna in any sense i mean going against is uh, asking for too much mm. even uh, going in that directionally uh, it doesn't happen mm. of course leaving aside rukmini satyabhama etc who are again goddess lakshmi so yes. in this whole discussion in any philosophical discussion uh, goddess lakshmi is above every every other thing yes. so we all aspire that you know we should learn bhakti from uh, hanuman hanuman we don't have that aspiration about learning uh bhakti from sita mm. she is beyond that mm. you know it is a sense of absoluteness which is there superb so this looks not like an introduction on madhvacharya rather like a trailer <laughs> to the introduction of madhvacharya to, uh, yes. to the introduction of madhvacharya yes. i'm very very uh, you know oh, what do you i i can't keep it in words very fascinated you know some kind of a very goosebumps i have when i hear that you know hanuman has incarnated to give us a knowledge of hari to give us a knowledge of rama then we should definitely take uh, to the philosophy of madhvacharya and try to understand what madhvacharya has explained right. thank you so much for telling us uh, who madhvacharya is hare shrinivasa hare shrinivasa